Hello, today we are going to continue looking at conversions. We're going to do one example of just kind of standard conversion, but one that's a little bit more difficult. And then we're going to do some compound units. So doing things like miles per hour, where it's not just one unit like miles or hours, but it's a combination of the two. So this is the seventh uh, video in the scientific notation and conversions uh, series for my physics classes. So we're going to start out with one second. What I want to know is, how many years are there in one second? Now this is a little bit of a ridiculous question, but it's a conversion problem where we can look at how to convert from seconds into years. So instead of saying one second, I want to be able to say some small number of years. So hopefully you realize that that is a small number of years, given that a year is a really big unit compared to seconds. So we want to get from one second into years. So if you remember from before, one of the things we want to try to do is to diagram the path that we're going to take. So I want to think of how am I going to get from seconds to years. Well, if I start with seconds, I know I can get to minutes from there because there's 60 seconds in a minute. I know there's 60 minutes in an hour, so I can get to hours. Okay? From hours, I can get to days. And from days, I can get to years. Now, some of you might know some shortcuts where, like, for example, instead of 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour, it turns out there's actually 3,600 seconds in an hour. So if you know those offhand, you can always shortcut this process a little bit. Also, those of you that know rent would know that there's 5,025, wait, how does it go? 525,600 minutes in a year. But anyway, uh, only if you happen to know those offhand. So we're going to start with one second. And if you remember, we're going to always multiply by something equaling to 1, meaning the top and bottom have to be equal values. Well, we've got seconds to minutes. So we want minutes up here, seconds down here, so that the seconds cancel out. I know 1 minute has 60 seconds. Seconds are going to cancel out. Right now, I'd be in minutes. Then I want to go from minutes to hours. Well, I know that 1 hour is 60 minutes. And again, remember that I'm putting minutes on the bottom so that they cancel out. But 1 hour and 60 minutes are the same thing, so this equals 1. Then I know that I've got 1 day is 24 hours. And that's so that hours and hours cancel out. Now we're in days. And last of all, 1 year is approximately 365 days. So that day and day cancel out. If you look, the only unit remaining is the one that we want to end up in, years. So to find the answer to this, we're simply going to take, remember we would just multiply across the top, well 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is just still 1. So then we're going to divide by 60, we're going to divide by 60, divide by 24, divide by 24. So there are two ways to do this. We could take 1 and divide, and this is literally how you would put it on your calculator to see the end of this, but uh, so we would divide every time. This is the way I like to do it because it's just click, quick and clean and you don't have to worry about it too much. The other thing you can do is you can take 1, divide by all of these things multiplied together. 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. But note the important thing here. You've got to have these parentheses if you do it that way. Otherwise, you'll take 1 divided by 60 and then that answer will get times by 60, times by 24, times by 365. We want to do this first, then we want to divide 1 by all of that. Whichever way you do it, I'll uh, grab my calculator here and I get 3.17 times 10, and I'm rounding, uh, times 10 to the negative 8th. Okay? Well, that's in scientific notation. I am perfectly fine, by the way, we are in years right now. I'm perfectly fine leaving it in scientific notation. The whole reason we have scientific notation is to be able to write really, really small numbers without having to write a whole bunch of zeros. This would be a very, very long thing to write. Uh, that's about it. Somewhere in there. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. There we are. So that's what it would have ended up being. But instead of doing that, uh, we can just leave it in scientific notation. So note that it's a really small number, which makes sense, because we would expect a very small number of years from this. Okay? So that was that first example. I'll let you take a quick look at what we did, and then I'll erase. 
Next example, we're going to start looking at these compound units. So we're going to take 55 miles an hour. And I want to convert that into a unit that we use more often in, in physics, which is meters per second. And the first thing I want to point out is that when we write MPH, we're not really being true to what the unit actually is. What we're really saying is that this is 55 miles divided by hours, just like this is meters divided by seconds. And that's because to find speed, roughly, we take how far something goes, change in position, and we divide by how much time it takes to do so. Okay, technically this is average speed. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so distance divided by time. Well, distance divided by time. Distance divided by time. Okay, so we have 55 miles per hour. We want to convert that into meters per second. So we have to think about how we're going to get there. Basically, here's the deal. We're going to take miles and we're going to convert that into meters. Then we're going to take hours and we're going to convert that into seconds. And we're going to do those each separately but all at once here. So let's start with miles. Our first conversion factor, we need to get from, and actually let's talk about how we're going to do this. How are we going to get from miles to meters? Well, we talked before about how there are 5,280 feet. By the way, there are other ways to go about this. I'm just going the one that most of my students tend to think of, which is 5,280 feet in one mile. We don't actually have to write that. Then I know I can get from feet to inches. I know I can get from inches to centimeters because there is 2.54 centimeters in one inch. And last of all, I can get from centimeters to meters. So that's the path I'm going to take for the distance unit. For the time unit, hours, and I think it's more or less clear how we're going to get from hours to seconds, so we're just kind of going to do that as we go, considering I'm pretty sure I'm running out of time on the video here. So. Converting miles, we're going to go miles to feet, so that means we have 5,280 feet in one mile. Note that miles cancel out miles, and we can keep going. Note that if I stopped right now, I'd be in feet per hour. I'd be going this times this, that many feet every hour. Okay? Now I'm going to go from feet to inches, well I have 12 inches in one foot. Then I have, I said 2.54 centimeters in one inch. And last of all, we have one, uh, sorry, I need to think about this for a second, and just because I'm going fast. So we have centimeters, we want to get in meters, so one meters is 100 centimeters, right? So checking this real quick, feet cancel with feet, inches with inches, centimeters with centimeters, and we'd be left with meters. Okay. Now the difficult thing about video here is what I would do next is I would actually continue writing parentheses. However, because of the limitations of the size of this video, I'm going to write more parentheses down here. It's the same string, it's just down here now. Okay. We need to get rid of this hours. Well, hours is on the denominator, so hours needs to be on the numerator up here. So getting into seconds, I'm going to say that one hour is 60 minutes. I wrote hour on top so that it cancels out with this hour on bottom. Okay. Then again, I have 60 minutes on bottom, so I want one minute up here, 60 seconds down here. Then minutes cancel out with minutes. And I'm left with, and this is important, the only things I'm left with, meters in the, not, in the numerator, that's the only thing not crossed out, seconds in the denominator. So then to find my answer, I know that it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 meters per second, just based on, uh, it's about a factor of two difference between miles per hour and meters per second, approximately. Oh, I'll go ahead and calculate it out um, just real quickly here. So we take 55, and this is the way I do it, times 5 to 80, times 12, times 2.54, then divide by 100, divide by 60, divide by 60. We end up with 24.6, basically. So that was a little off. I couldn't remember which way it rounds from. So 24.6 meters per second. Okay. These are harder to check for reasonableness unless you actually know that there's about a factor of two difference between these two, between miles per hour and meters per second. However, now that you know that, if you have to do this kind of conversion, you'll know about where you should be, where you should be ending up.